Okay, so um, I'm really uh, delighted to be able to introduce our next speaker, uh, Pratik Batnaga, who has uh, is been working at Google for a little while, uh, works on the AMP team there, doing lots of work to try and make the web faster on mobile devices, and has a great heritage in that as well, because Pratik was also part of the team that worked on Flipkart. Um, I don't know if anyone came across Flipkart, this incredible uh, um, uh, vending, uh, uh, shopping site uh, based in India. Uh, that was like the canonical reference for me for progressive web apps, offline first, and I, I saw that at the Chrome Dev Summit a few years ago, and was just blown away, and I was showing everybody how, how things could, could behave uh, offline uh, first and on mobile, just a superb piece of work. Um, so really delighted that Pratik's um, here joining us today. Um, Matt mentioned at the beginning uh, in his keynote uh, some talk about uh, the kind of tooling that you know we, we can, we're seeing uh, running through the builds on Netlify and the different popularity of different tooling and build tools and frameworks and so on. Uh, and there's no doubt that the kind of evolution of frameworks and this kind of tooling is helping us squeeze out more and more performance uh, from the browser. Uh, and Preact is a great example of that. Um, that's evolving at quite a rate, and it's uh, interesting to see where it's going to go next, uh, and Pratik has some skills right there. So please make him very, very welcome. It's Pratik Patnaga, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks, Phil. Um, okay, but this, this, this side. Okay. Yay. Nice. We are up. Okay, uh, I'm Pratik Bhatnagar, uh, and I am an engineer on the Google AMP team by the day. And in my free time, I go back to this another awesome project called Preact CLI, and that's what this, con uh, this talk's gonna be about. You can find me as underscore Pratik BH on Twitter and without the underscore on the rest of the internet because Twitter. <laughs> cool, uh, so this talk will be about building apps, web apps specifically that fly in terms of user experience. Build with Preact CLI. Cool. So, uh, sorry. In case you're wondering what's that building on the screen, that's just a hangout place from the city that I'm from. Uh, and back at home, uh, this used to be a place where friends used to get together. And like any group of tech friends, we used to discuss the next billion dollar idea. And I'm really happy like some of my friends did there to go out and build their own companies. And the only reason why I used to be excited about was that I would get to do web development on somebody else's money. <laughs> yeah, uh, and once I start seeing what kind of products they made, they were like really great ideas, but as soon as I went to their web apps, I cringed a little because they were not performant, and it was like it was really, really easy to build poor websites, even back then, even now. So I started looking at the problems, like why exactly are there so many? Uh, why is it so easy to make poor performant websites out there? And the problem started at the very, very first step. It's in your face, the web development setup. Like, it's not easy. And the reason is, I wish it would have been dead by chocolate because we could have just eaten it. But it's actually dead by tooling. So if you are like starting a project, starting a web app, like you have to just figure out a bunch of stuff. You're like going to build a, a big web app. There's going to be some CSS preprocessors you might want because you don't want your entire CSS just to put out there in one bundle. So like. Maybe you have to like configure less or SAS or something else, which is like not really bad and not really tough. It's it's something, but that you have to go through. But then also came like CSS preprocessors because nobody likes writing vendor prefixed CSS by their hand. So like let something take care of this. Okay, enough. Uh, next come bundlers. Uh, some of the very famous bundle uh, bundlers require a sacrifice of an engineer on your team infused <laughs> with energy drinks. Uh, I, get, I guess bad reaction, we all know. Uh, then came the uh, fourth thing called modern JavaScript. OK, so we are now all writing ES6, but this, is, this thing's not working for my clients because they're using some older browsers. And they don't understand ES6. OK, well, we'll throw in Babel there. 
Then came asset compression. Oh, you forgot, you deployed your web app, you've, you've done good thing, but you forgot to do gzip or your uh, provider is not doing it. If you are like, if you're not using a serverless thing, or if your uh, web hosting is not doing a gzipping for your uh, for you, you might have just skipped this. So asset compression is one more thing that you have to take care of. Then came service worker tooling because uh, we are not building for the 90s. We are building for the new mobile age. And if like if you really want to uh, want your product to be there, performant, and in the hands of people everywhere. You really need to take care of spotty networks, maybe even offline scenarios, because a lot of your users might be traveling into trains, in subways, in lifts, and in basements. Like, all I know, even IKEA cash counters does not get networks, even in Palo Alto. So you have to take care of uh, spotty networks. Then come like performance plugins. OK, everything is done, everything is working, but you Someone will come to you and tell, tell you like, hey, this is not really fast. This is, uh, this is still slow. And then you have to throw in some performance plugins like critical CSS, do your code, chunk, uh, code splitting, and more of those things. So like with, you just had an idea. You wanted to build an app. And you, wanted, uh, like you want your idea to land to your users. But you have to like take care of so many things. That's actually where pre-XCLI comes in. So last year at uh, Google I.O., we launched uh, pre-XCLI, the first version. And what it does, like, it took care of everything. It, uh, as soon as you use pre-XCLI, it gives you support for less, less whatever you choose to use. Uh, sets up a good optimal Bibble uh, configuration for you. Uh, configures Webpack for you. Thank God for that. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, like, puts in some performance plugins like, OK, I'll do automatically inline. Automatically, I'll inline your critical CSS. I'll make a service worker for you. I'll also give you a Firebase JSON. So like, if you go and use Firebase, like here is how you can use HTTP2. Here is how you can do custom headers, which will make your apps even faster. So uh, before, uh, like without any more theory on the stuff. Like, let's get into the juice. Like, how do you install pre-XCLI? It's a small command. Just do npmi global of pre-XCLI, and it will be installed for you. And there will be a like, bunch of commands, uh, commands for you to be used. I'm using a next version for it, because I'm demoing what's coming next into the third version. We are like very close to uh, publish the third version of pre-XCLI, and it will bring a lot of goodness with it. So far, uh, it has been a great scaffolding tool, uh, and it has done. Uh, it sets you up to a great start with 100 uh, lighthouse score and everything. With this next version, we are trying to be more with you during the entire development process. So it's like whenever you are trying to do something which is non-performant, PXCLI will come and step in and tell you that hey, you can do things better here. So it's no more just a scaffolding tool. It's going beyond that and trying to be there with you for the entire uh, development cycle. Cool. So the first and the most basic thing is Preact Create. So like this is how you bootstrap your project with Preact CLI. You just do Preact Create. It asks you a bunch of questions like, what kind of uh, app do you want? So we have a bunch of templates, which I'll be discussing in some time. So you can choose one of them. You can choose uh, one of your own as well. Uh, the directory that you want, the name, and just some basic questions. And it will create a project for you. Uh, next up is React Watch. What this thing does is basically sets up a hot uh, module replacement Webpack dev server for you. So let me show you. Like, let's just quickly jump to a demo. Is this visible? Is, this, is the font fine? Yeah, cool. OK. <laughs> That's good. So OK, uh, I have done, like I have created uh, some React projects for you, because by the nature of it, it has to install NPM dependencies. And I don't want to do that on the stage. So yeah. <laughs> so we are, uh, we are in one of the demo. And we have, if you do Preact Watch, it just spins up. Uh, Webpack dev server for you with hot module replacement. Let's just quickly go there. OK. Yes. OK. You're up and running. You can do your code as you want. OK, 
okay, home, let's just do this home page and just a basic demo of everything is working fine without a refresh, everything is being, repla uh, being replaced. So um, this is Preact Watch. The next up is Preact Build. So Preact Build is uh, another command which builds production ready bundles for you. So all you have to do is Preact Build and there will be a build, uh, build folder for you with, okay, yeah. Okay, yes. And the good thing about this uh, command is like, it'll show you the gzip versions, uh, the gzip sizes of your bundles. It'll also tell you if, your if one of your bundle is like really inflating up and might hurt your user experience, it might just tell you that, hey, you might want to do a code splitting here. So with that said, like this is all built, you can just, Use this uh, folder and deploy it to whatever web hosting you have, and this will just work. Okay. okay, and another thing that we have, offline support, by uh, offline support out of the box, like you can just go offline and everything is working st as is. Okay. So that was like Preact Watch, and Preact Build is, as I said, is gives you production-ready bundles. Next up, the uh, templates. So like, hey, uh, we have four templates for you. Uh, one's like Material, the default, and the widget, and the simple. So like, the default template gives you a web app and gives you a, no, uh, a screen with two routes. So a home, just a normal demo app. Whereas the simple is like your simple hello world with like no routes, no code splitting set up for you. You can just uh, start from the very scratch. You can choose your own tools. Next is the material uh, component. So this is like a material uh, template, sorry. So this template is built with the MDC web implementation of Preact bindings. So you, uh, your web app will be ready to use MDC web and the material design on the very first go. So like you can just use Preact create material and the uh, app name and this is ready for you to use. Okay. Fourth is a widget. So there have been times where you don't, you're not really building an app. You're rather building a widget. So it's like, hey, I'll, uh, I'll build a clock widget because until very recently, uh, the UI that browser gave, uh, gave us was drop downs to select time. So it's like, hey, let my user deserves better than this, so I will build a widget, let's say a clock widget. So this is the template that you go to uh, in case if you are building a widget instead of an app. Yeah, so, uh, and next, then like, there is the ability to do custom templates, so you can, fork these templates, add your own functionality to it. So if you have a favorite way of bootstrapping your project, this is the way to go. So I have uh, my personal favorite is like a project which has material design on it and has some Redux on it. Uh, so like I forked the, uh, I'll fork the base repo and created my own repo called Material Ducks. So all I have to do is like create, preact, create the uh, Pratik VH slash Material Ducks and the app, uh, app name. So it'll uh, scaffold the entire app. It still guarantee all the uh, best performances from uh, best web performance practices, and I'm good to go from there. I can just start writing my app logic without worrying about the entire tooling. So this is a lot about scaffolding. So like, what's, what's the big deal? So here's, here's a few things that out of the box Preact brings to you. We just call it like out of the box magic. Every app that you create with Preact CLI uh, guarantees you a hundred light score on all the four pillars of Lighthouse. Next up, code splitting. Like every route that you make with Preact CLI is guaranteed to have its own bundle code splitted automatically without you doing anything. No imports, no required dot ensure, no any fancy things. You just have to uh, create your route inside the route folder and we automatically code split it for you. Okay, uh, next up, like offline support. As we just discussed, every app built with the default templates uh, will have a service worker supporting uh, the offline capable shell. 
obviously cannot uh, predict all your APIs. So there's a way to configure it, which we'll discuss, but uh, by default, your shell will be available offline to your users. Next, the purple pattern. So React uh, CLI also gives you HTTP push headers. So like whenever your user lands on a page, all the assets needed to build that page are pushed from the uh, server if your server uh, just supports HTTP2. And the bundle uh, sizing, as I showed you, like there is a tracker of how big of, a, of each of your bundle is. So if your bundle is really inflating, there will be warnings in your, uh, on your console saying that, hey, we think that this route is really, really, has gotten really, really big. And maybe it's time to just uh, split this in by code splitting by using a dynamic import. There are wa uh, various ways to do it, maybe like a viewport base in viewport and out of the viewport chunking that that's all uh, up to you but we'll help you step uh, we'll help you by stepping in and saying that hey this is where you need to uh, split your javascript next so like what's under the hood and like whatever is after this slide you can really use even on your web apps it's like those are all best practices for web built baked into pre CLI, but Okay, we are, if you are not using Pre-XCLI, you can still do these things. First up is like ES modules. We ship whatever is built with Pre-XCLI ships with ES module support. Uh, we build both uh, versions of it, like uh, the version which is uh, transpiled only to ES 2015 and is shipped with script type module, and a uh, usual ES5 module, uh, ES5 bundle, which is shipped to all the older browsers. So. Like you can write as much ES6 code as you want without uh, without worrying about how much will this trans uh, get transpiled to when it becomes ES5. So like you can use endless number of classes, endless number of cons, lets, uh, endless number of async awaits, and it will just be fine because they don't have to be trans uh, transpiled to ES5 anymore. If you are using uh, strip type modules, browsers can just understand that we support the new version and can use this strip instead of the ES5 one. Okay, for compression, like we are going beyond uh, the usual Uglify. Uglify was really, really good up until ES5, then came Uglify ES, uh, Uglify ES6, which uh, promised to be good about ES6, but then it's no longer maintained. So Tursa is this new project, which not only supports compression of ES6, but also further uh, ECMAScript version. So it does optimizations for you like, hey, if you are doing object destructuring, uh, let's just keep that in that format and not uh, do it at, uh, and not add Babel polyfills for it. Next up, inline uh, critical CSS. We can pre-render all your routes and we go into those routes and see the, C uh, the CSS files that you are given to those routes take out all the CSS from those files, see whichever is actually critical for this page, and inline that uh, on your head. So this, this really, really, really boosts your first pains for your uh, web apps. We also do, uh, like, there are no strip tag, uh, there are no link rel style sheet tags on your document. There are only just preload tags, and when those preloads are completed, we just switch them to become a style sheet tag. Network resiliency, uh, as we have like just discussed, PreXCLI uh, builds two service workers for you. So like one is for one is which caches your ES6 files, one is which caches your older ES5 code. So according to whichever bundle you use, a proper pre-caching is already done for you. And polyfills, we we ship. Uh, promises and fetch polyfill, but we only download it when it's actually needed by the browser. So like, you can be sure that while developing your web app, fetch will always be there. You can use promises, uh, and you can use async awaits, and we'll take care of the rest. H1 uh, support. So like, we know that a few people are not there yet. They aren't like on the H2 bandwagon yet. So we still support with, the, with, with a small flag called preact build hyphen hyphen preload. You can still, instead of doing the H2 push, you can get all that goodness with the help of link rel preloads. Okay, uh, next come pre-XCLI plugins. So we, like, if there is one species uh, on this planet, it's the engineers who don't like magic. 
They really need to know what's going on in their code. And we understand this, like, and we never want it to be a walled box where everything has to, be, has to happen according to us. So Pre-X CLI plugins is a way of ta taking over the entire setup of Pre-X CLI in your own hands. There's a small, uh, all you have to do is in a uh, file called pre .configs you have to just declare a function. That's it. And this function will have helpers, config, and environment variables given to you as arguments. With helpers, you can just take over the entire Webpack config. You can remove stuff that we did for you. You can add more stuff. You can, as soon as, like, as, soon as you get time from building your product to get more and more, like, to do more performance enhancement thing, just use this function, take over the entire Webpack plugin, and go crazy with it. Next, uh, like, here's a sample of a default Preact CLI plugin. So this plugin gives, uh, replaces the default as the uh, service worker toolbox with the workbox, the new workbox uh, library. All you have to do is just like import uh, a function from this uh, plugin and use this preact.config.js to uh, initialize this plugin. And it will automatically modify the Webpack config underhood. There are more plugins to help you, like there, there's a plugin to help you with uh, TypeScript. There's a plugin to help you with uh, more, a different kind of async await. So that's, that's on the time of compile, uh, build time instead of the runtime, the default Babel generator. <coughs> we also do pre-rendering for your app. So all you have to do is like give us a title, give us the URL, and we'll go to that URL and pre-render that page for you and keep that uh, keep it in that particular folder as index index.html. So you 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 don't have to bang your head against an SSR wall or the server side rendering wall. This if you are good with a pre-render like at a build time pre-render, this is this just happens out for you out of the box. You just have to give us a JSON. Uh, as an array, and give us the title and the URL. You can give more custom props, which we'll pass to your components uh, while pre-rendering. So if there's like any prop that you really need at the time of pre-rendering, you can just append to this uh, object. But we do support SSR. Like SSR is something more complex uh, and is not just as dumb as uh, pre-rendering. So what you have to do is like. You take over the index.html and instead of the one that we build, you actually intercept the request process of whatever logic you have, and then you can just inject that uh, particular body in your index.html. There's a, uh, there, there's a very uh, clear example on uh, this particular uh, repo in, on GitHub, and this has like a full setup of uh, server-side rendering with Preact. So with all of uh, that goodness, like we we hope that uh, we are there for the entire development process. And there are like more features that are coming in that, that's not in this particular demo because they're not ready yet. Uh, but they will, we will be telling like, hey, these calls of yours are failing, so maybe you can add runtime caching and offline support for these APIs. Hey, maybe more of these uh, APIs post calls are failing. You can add background fetch, uh, background sync to these APIs. And with those, uh, we'll be there for you to help you build a better web app throughout the process and not just uh, as a scaffolding tool. Thank you. Bye -bye.